Can you look right here and smile with me? Here we go. Cheese. Cheese, except this is a video. Hey, Hills Church, uh, it's great to be with you. Uh, my name is Taylor, and I'm one of the pastors. Thank you for joining us today for our morning, uh, Thursday morning time of worship and prayer. Uh, if you got Bibles, you can turn to 1 Peter chapter 2. That's where we're going to be in just a little bit. Right now, we're going to worship, and uh, in just a little bit, I'm going to tell you a story about this guy. This is my son, Finn. Uh, and Finn, are we going to worship together? You say, yeah? No, right now. Oh, not right now. All right. Well, uh, he's going to go probably watch a little bit. What show do you want to go watch? Watch Paw Patrol. Paw Patrol. Okay. He's going to go watch Paw Patrol. Uh, we are going to worship together. And then I'll, uh, I'll see you guys after a couple songs. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye.
between us how high the mountain I could not climb in desperation I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night then through the darkness your loving kindness Tore through the shadows of my soul The work is finished The end is written Jesus Christ, my living
All right. Well, I, uh, I said I was going to tell you a story about my son, Finn. If you're just joining the stream or if you join during worship, my name is Taylor. I'm one of the pastors at the Hills. Thanks for being with us on this Thursday morning. So my son, Finn, is three years old, and he is at this stage now that when he is in the bathtub, he likes to get in and out of the bath a lot. Sometimes it's because he thought of a toy that he wanted that was out in the living room, and sometimes it's because he wants to come tell us something about a storm that happened in the bathtub or, or something like that. But there's there's a lot of wet feet around our house whenever he is taking a bath. So just a couple days ago, he uh, he was in the bathtub. My wife and I were doing a couple other things. And, uh, and all of a sudden, I heard my wife walk into the bathroom. And she stopped at the door. And she went, oh, and I wondered. And she goes, oh, buddy. And she saw that he had gotten into the bathroom closet and gotten down a metal tin full of band-aids. And he had gotten back in the tub, dumped all the band-aids out, and was using the tin as like a ladle uh, to mess around with the bath water. And so he's just sitting in this soapy bathtub. It's littered with band-aids all over. And, uh, and I took this picture. <laughs> it's just this hilarious moment. Um, that image has been kind of stuck in my mind ever since it happened. Uh, and I tell you that story because like we, we all know that, that bath water and band-aids are helpful for us. But we also understand the difference. See, bath water helps to get rid of things we don't want anymore by washing them away. And a band-aid helps us take care of a wound while it's healing. Recently, there was a pastor named Darren Patrick, who was a pretty well-known uh, church planter and author, and he tragically passed away. And I saw a, a tribute uh, online to him in which, uh, in which another, another pastor shared this quote from Darren Patrick. Quote, we often get sins and wounds confused. Sins are rebellious places in our heart that need repentance. Wounds are tender places in our heart that need healing. You can't repent of wounds, and you can't get therapy for sins. Man, I, I read that quote, and I just sat there and thought about that for a second. And I thought about how dangerous it is 
to not be able to understand the difference between sins and wounds in our lives. Because so often, one of the things that uh, I think happens to us, um, not only in, in society and in church, but in our hearts, is that they can get so tangled up that we have a hard time understanding uh, not just the difference. We can, we can understand the conceptual difference. But what we struggle with is, how does that play out in my heart throughout the day, in my actions, in my thoughts, in my attitudes? And so um, I, I mentioned uh, at the beginning uh, of our time this morning, 1 Peter chapter 2, because just looking at this chapter, uh, one of the things I noticed was this helpful language about both sins and wounds and how to approach them uh, in a healthy way, but also understanding their difference. So for Peter's words for sin, for starting with sin and understanding this rebellious part of our heart, that we need to repent for. How do we take this approach? Well, Peter begins in verse 1 and says, Therefore, rid yourselves of all, and then he begins to list a bunch of different sins, malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. So sin is something we are meant to get rid of. Elsewhere in the chapter, in, uh, in verse 23, uh, we see... Uh, actually, excuse me, not, not verse 23, verse 11, uh, we see him saying, Dear friends, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain from sinful desires. So sin is something not only that we want to get rid of, to abstain from, but this kind of language is throughout the New Testament. That when uh, when we are tempted to sin, our, our, our approach should be to fight it. To uh, Elsewhere in the New Testament, you see language about crucifying the sinful desires, putting them to death, taking sinful thoughts captive. Sin, our approach to sin is to fight, is to put to death, is to actively push back against that temptation. And when we have sinned, then to turn to God and repent, which is to say once again, Lord, uh, I, I, I'm giving up, I'm turning away from that mentality, that way of life, that idea. That's not who I am. That's not who I want to be. That's not who you've made me to be in Jesus. So when we sin, we repent. And when we are tempted to sin, we take Peter's approach and we say, I'm going to push against that. I'm going to fight that. I'm going to, I'm going, I'm going to abstain from. And so uh, one of the things that, that we have to remember as followers of Jesus is that we really, we can't fight sin on our own. Uh, we can try, but again and again, we will fail. We don't do it in our own power. When we fight sin as followers of Jesus, if you're a follower of Jesus, you have the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ in you. And it's the Holy Spirit who enables and empowers us to put sin to death and live into the new reality of who we are in Jesus. There is resurrection power in you and in me if you are a follower of Jesus. And that's how we fight sin. But not only that, now I want to I want to wrestle with the fact that for a lot of us, what, what gets dangerous is we end up confusing sins and wounds because so often wounds set the stage for us to sin. Let me let me help explain what I mean. See, wounds are things that happen to us. Uh, they are they're disappointments that uh, that cause us to. Uh, to feel crestfallen or to distrust other people around us. They are betrayals that cause us to be wary of close relationships. Uh, they uh, Wounds are, even what we're experiencing right now in the midst of a global pandemic, there's so many things outside of us that are causing us uh, pain and fear and anguish and anxiety. All of us are wounded in this season to some degree or another. Now, 1 Peter chapter 2 is really helpful because Peter actually goes to the example of Jesus. What did he do in the moments when he was wounded? If you look at verse 23, Peter writes and says, When, when people hurled their insults at Jesus, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Now, just a quick pause. Like, how, how often for us when we are wounded do we want to wound back? How often for us, when something happens, we want to retaliate. We want to make threats. We want to push our chest out proverbially. We, we want to attack back. And yet, that's not what Jesus did. What did he do? 
Instead, the second half of verse 23, Jesus entrusted himself to God who judges justly. See, for us, for the wounds that are in our life, whether they're wounds inside of our family, wounds at our workplace, wounds that maybe go back to uh, uh, earlier times, uh, maybe for, for anybody who's uh, who's a little bit older, maybe those are times where you look back at college, you look back at high school, you look back at some formative years, and there are some wounds that you still carry. Or maybe they're present wounds of things going on in your life right now, and in your relationships, or even in your own mind and heart. See, what Jesus shows us is that in response to wounds, we must acknowledge them, but then we need to entrust them to God. Now, that doesn't mean passively we don't care about mending or taking care of or acknowledging and talking through how we've been wounded or what we're wrestling with. The point is we don't want to ignore our wounds because you can, listen close, you can ignore your wound, but you're still going to live from it. I mean, all of us know someone in our lives who clearly lives from a particular wound. That divorcee who, who can't help but bring up uh, uh, the, the failed marriage and the betrayal that took place, and they still live in that wound. You can think of the person who, maybe there's somebody right now who they've been furloughed, and every conversation that comes up, that's the thing that they boomerang back to, and it's still continuing to, to bother them and frustrate them, and we can live from our wounds. They happen in lots of different ways, but, but the dangerous thing is that wounds create a toxicity in our heart when left unacknowledged. When we ignore wounds, they they create this setting in which the disappointment, the damage, the despair, it can set the stage for disobedience. That's where Satan will turn our wounds into a place that will lead us to sin, which is why they can feel so tangled up. And yet for each one of us, as we begin this day, maybe the, the thing to remember is when we look at Jesus, we see the one who defeated our sin And we see the one who 1 Peter 2 says that he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. Jesus defeated sin and by his spirit we have the the power to fight sin today. But Jesus also healed us and is healing us. He is our wounded healer. And by his wounds on the cross, we see a God who every time we've been wounded, every way we've been betrayed, every way that we've experienced some emotional or physical violence against us, well, then in those times we remember we have a God who is right there with us, who knows what it is to be wounded, and who knows and has the power to heal us. And that's what keeps us from experiencing the the, the cliche that hurt people hurt people. We we don't want to let our wounds lead us and feed our sins, but instead, understanding the difference, we can say, you know what? I am not my wounds. I am not my sin. I am not what I've done, and I'm not what's been done to me. Instead, well, 1 Peter 2 says, you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. So friends, let's live in the light today, knowing that God in his grace and mercy not only defeated our sin and empowers us today, but he is healing and has healed and will heal every wound that we receive. So go in grace today. We love you. We'll see you tomorrow.